Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. And I think, I think Andy, that it comes down to a lot also knowing your avatar, uh, as Kevin mentioned, because, you know, had Kevin not known his customer, those bully sticks in a nice cigar box and everything might not have worked. And what I often see is some of these programs that teach you, oh, just launch a really high end version of this. You know, it worked for Kevin with bully sticks, right? I've actually heard that story before. And, and, um, it's, it's all about knowing your customer. So you can launch a prettier version of something that nobody cares if it's prettier and you still don't make any sales because you, you don't understand the customer or the market. And I've had, and not just prettier, but sometimes it matters. Like I helped somebody with a, um, with a candle, a scented candle, and they launched it completely on Amazon and didn't do the market research, just made a really nice looking brand. Right. And, uh, launching on Amazon. We couldn't, we could not sell this thing. I mean, I optimized the listing. We redid the photos. We made it look amazing. We showed it in use, everything. It, nothing mattered. And this thing was not going to sell. Right. So we did the market. I went back and did the market research because I don't normally do market research for my clients. I expect them to know their customer before they come to me for help with things like listing optimization. And, um, and so I go back and I do the market research because I can't figure it out. I'm like, man, I've done every trick I know to get this thing selling. I go back and I look and every single scented candle being used for this purpose was and selling well was one that you could walk into a store and physically smell first. So in this particular part of the candle market, people were only going to buy a candle that they could go into a store and smell first. They were, they were not going to trust the scent that we were just putting on Amazon. So that was, you know, that's another thing about just understanding your market, understanding the buying habits of the customer that's in that marketplace, because it's not always going to work to put a pretty bow on it or to make your brand look really professional and your images look really good and put a really high price tag on it. If you don't understand the customer habit in the first place. I mean, you mean, must- Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. Yeah, I mean that that that's that's a good that's a good point. I mean, all my bully sticks, um, you know, those were selling, and the biggest uh, company out there in the bully stick market, big company out of Virginia, they they saw me and they they're like, "There's just no way this guy is selling these bully sticks, three bully sticks for fifty fifty five dollars. That's just no way." I mean, they keep seeing me ranking. They're like, "Reverse engineer me? No, he's not doing all these launches or crazy stuff." He's so they reached out to me and said, "Hey, we want to do business with you." And we have a whole line of stuff. We'll do a private label uh, line of, uh, of treats for you. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. So I was at one of the pet expos in, in uh, Las Vegas. And one of the hot trends at the time was like uh, sweet potato fries for dogs, like one or two ingredient uh, treats for dogs. And so I made the mistake of using my intuition and my, and my gut instead of using the data. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to launch. We'll launch these. And so we made these things. My first seven reviews were one star. These things stunk. They didn't keep very well. Uh, I launched something else with these, this other company. Uh, like We have pig ears. We have this and you know all these things. I launched a few things with them. Didn't do nearly as well. So I went back to what, I, what was working and what the data said and the differentiation because there's no differentiation in the pig ears. I couldn't figure out a way. Uh, you know, I, those didn't make sense to put into a cigar box um, you know, or whatever. So you have, to, you have to be careful on that. And the other thing, like, like Amy says, is buyer intent. You can look at these keywords you got to look at what's on page one. If you just type in a keyword, you type in baby blanket, or that's my, my, my not the best example, but you type in a, you know, whatever the keyword is, just use baby, baby blanket, and you up comes the first result, uh, the page of results, you know, 16, 24, whatever the number is, and you hit the little button that says, show me the, the market, and it says, you know, this $3 million or whatever in baby blankets. You got to look through that. How many of those are actually baby blankets? What are, what is someone, what's the customer when they're typing in that keyword, what are they really looking for? Like she said on the scented candle, what are they truly looking for? You got to scroll over those. And a lot of times, I mean, there's a perfect example like wine coolers. Someone types in wine coolers, there's all kinds of stuff that shows up, desktop wine coolers, wine racks, wine, whatever on the first page. If your product is a, a, a wine rack, you're not competing against the wine coolers. You can't build that into your market and use that score. Like, uh, like Andy said, that that's, that's just using the straight data that comes back without putting a human analytical touch to it. Our brains are a lot smarter than any of the software machines out there or software tools. Um, even though some of them think they're AI, they're not yet. Um, so you, you gotta, you gotta be smart about things. 
Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.